Because I know your background was you're born in Wales, right? Yeah. Moved out to Barbados. Yeah. Any time in America? Mm, bits and pieces, but never lived there. So how come you moved from Wales to Barbados? So that's quite a big change from the from yeah. the hills in Wales where there's sheep everywhere to the Caribbean shores is quite a, a big difference. How, yeah. how did that come about? It was a massive difference at the time. Um, my dad just got a job. Okay. Um, that he couldn't turn down, I guess. Nice. So we all went out to Barbados, um, which is brilliant. Obviously, as soon as I went out there, there's no there's no real great standard of football. Um, you know, That's true. you know, I mean, the talented talented blokes out there. Yeah. Like you get left for dead. Yeah. So we're playing in North Wales. You know, the, the, every every team would have, you know, a, a couple of lads who are all right, but then over there, there is some blokes with serious skill. Yeah. But the the football knowledge over there isn't like it is over over here. Right. Okay. So there's no so there's a there's a huge gap. You know, the lads are like proper talented, proper skilled, but there's a huge gap in knowledge and tactics and all the rest of it. Right. Whereas cricket, they're all just mustard. Because you see that and. I, you, well, who played? I bet you everyone supports Man United, right? Yeah. Who played? Is it Dwight York? Dwight York? Andy Cole? No, Dwight uh, York. One of them's from Barbados, isn't he? Dwight York's from um, Caribbean Trinidad, Island. I think. Right. Yeah. So that's how obviously the Man United link with yeah. the Caribbean's big. But going on to the cricket, it must have been a complete change because you're growing up in Wales playing, I presume your local village club or whatever it was. Yeah. And then obviously Barbados isn't a massive place. No. You can drive around the island in a day, half a day probably. Half a day, yeah. Half a day. So I guess everyone knows each other. And yeah. You know all the promising young lads coming through. But in terms of the coaching aspect, how did that differ? Because you watch the IPL or you watch the CPL and you see all these young lads just coming out swinging. Is that the way they're brought up playing? Aggressive uh, attacking cricket because they can, yeah. because it's good wickets. Whereas in the UK they can't because it's swinging and nipping. Yeah. Would you say that's fair? 100%. You, you, they... The coaches that I had yeah. in Barbados encouraged me to be natural more than anything else, mm -hmm. and take the game on and be positive, um, and use that as my point of difference. Right. Okay. Because you you know you sort of come over here, mm. and you can go to any, uh, like under fifteen club nets, yeah. under fifteen county nets of any club or county, and mm. you can guarantee you know how the batters are going to bat before you even get there they're all going to have a nice sort of upright posture nice <laughs> high back lift you know there'll be some sort of back and across trigger you know everybody's gonna everybody's gonna I bat could like not that. agree more but yeah in I Barbados it's completely it's completely the other way and everything's just encouraged to be natural and you know to sort of let your talent come out I remember I was very young I was must have been 15 or so and um I can't remember the exact wording, but I was basically told if you're not relaxed and just reacting to the ball, how are you ever going to let your talent come out? If you it's if you're so constantly true. stiff, how are you just going to let your talent come out? That's so true. Because and, and I'll back that point up because obviously, going from playing into coaching the last three years, I've coached quite a lot of good young players, and half of them just bat exactly the same. Mm. They they stand up right, they trigger back and across, and they just try and hit in the V. And when actually you get you get those not arrogant kids but you get those ones who don't like rules and they don't like being told what to do mm -hmm. and they're the ones that have more flair and more talent playing shot if that makes sense 100 like there's a there's a lad i'm coaching he's a really talented player he does not care about anything technical he just tries to belt it from ball one but his technique because he does that is best than someone that's been coached properly yeah um so it's interesting and do you think leading on from that We'll go back in a minute to the Barbados point, but do you think that's why now you're extremely good at opening the batting in one day cricket? Because for those of you who don't know, when, in one day cricket in the top of the order, especially T20, the bowler's trying to bowl, top of off stump, back of a length. That that area where you want to come forward, you're not sure to go forward or back. But that's a strength of yours, isn't yeah. it? Because this is why I've was asking if you grew up in America because it's almost like a baseball shot you play Yeah, you take the bowler's good length away naturally Yeah, and do you think that has massively helped you and do you think it goes back from when you were younger playing in Barbados uh, definitely I think that comes from baseball that side of things um, you like your baseball don't that, you yeah I do <laughs> that it's like a I don't know it's like a low strike 
Right, okay. So that's like just the sort of like top of the stumps length. Yeah. And when I played baseball, I was good at hitting low strikes and I was good at hitting low balls as well. So when the ball was out the strike zone, reaching down and still making a good contact. Right, okay. So that that was like one of my strengths, whereas when somebody could like throw proper heat and they could get it up in the strike zone, then I'd get done. So if I, if I was to get playing at somebody who could throw good gas and they were hitting the top of the strike zone, I wouldn't get on base at all. But and then especially if they had some sort of breaking ball that could do me for, for a lack of pace. But when guys got it down in the zone, yeah, I could, I could always, I could always get on base. See, that's amazing. And for anyone listening out there, you obviously played a lot of baseball, didn't you, when you were growing up and yeah. other sports. Playing other sports has massively helped you in your profession now, hasn't it? Of course it has. And a lot of kids now go, no, I'm going to concentrate on cricket or football or rugby. Yeah, because they're naturally right. good at it. But you've got to play other sports, man. You have to. You have to. You how can, have to, how have can to. you not? Because you would not be able... I Well, listening to that, I would say you would not be the player you are now without having played baseball when you were younger. No. you wouldn't be able to hit a bowler's good length, naturally. Yeah, exactly. I don't think there's anyone in the UK that can do it consistently as well as you do. Really, if we're being brutally honest, yeah. everyone hits through, either stays leg side of it, hits through cover, because mm. they've been brought up in a naturally correct way. Yeah. There's no one that just stands in the middle and hits a bowler's good length over mid wicket in Cal Corner. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's not, is it? No, it's pretty rogue. And people are like, oh, he's slogging, but actually, it's slogging if you do it three and ten times. Yeah. But you're doing it like 80, 90% of the time. Yeah. And especially in the top six, where you've got one fielder out of deep square. Yeah. People just can't bolt you. Well, people have started changing now. Have they? What have we been doing? People started going cow and deep square. But then surely that's... You it plays into my hands perfectly. Because then you can stay leg side of it? Yeah. And then anything on middle and off stuff? But I, I don't like staying leg side of it. Right, okay. So even when they put those two out, yeah. I'm still looking to hit the ball hard and flat. Because there's only two blokes out there. You've got to get it. If you get your power, five, ten yards either side, it's still yeah. four, isn't it? Because as soon as bowlers do that, they all miss short. Right. So okay. now I'm just playing everything off the back foot. Because they know they... As soon as they do that, the bowler doesn't have the, doesn't the award that none of them are brave enough unless the top top bowlers yeah. to come full, to it's miss full because if they miss full, it's just poor bowling. So they'll always miss short or bowl a cutter or change of pace or something. And they have to get it just right, otherwise it's runs, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Which is interesting. Interesting. So it's nice how your other sports have now massively helped what you're doing. But going back mm. to your Barbadian point of playing different sports and being quite natural. Then coming over to the UK yeah. and going to school in the UK from what, 16? Yeah. How did that link come for you getting into Sussex? Because obviously you went, for those that don't know, Phil, you went to school in Surrey. Is that yeah, right? I went to But going back to, to the cricket, you then got signed in your 18, 19, didn't you? Yeah, I got signed when I was, yeah, I would have been eight, 18, no, straight out of school, school when I was 18, nine, uh, 19. 19. Yeah. So I remember, because I was on the staff at the same time, and we played club cricket together at Brighton. And what I, what, what, I remember watching you in the net, and at times, there was this young kid who absolutely whacked it against everyone. Yeah. And I was like, wow, this kid can play. Yeah. And there's something inside you, like, this kid can play. And then there were other times I'd watch you back, and this is not being disrespectful to you, but you looked awful. Yeah. And you're trying to reverse sweep people in the nets, like seamers, and that's what I mean what I was trying to say earlier about listening to people and doing it your way because the typical yeah. English way is be correct play properly but you're a bit you're, you are a maverick you do things your way yeah and, and that's what I mean so you at 18, 19 when you're on the staff you would run down second ball in a full day game and try and hit someone for six yeah and then you're on 30 not out playing beautifully playing properly and then you would try and reverse sweep a seamer yeah. in a four day game and I'd be like I would be watching and be like mate you, you're 35 and out on a flat yeah. one in the second team you want to play first team cricket if you bat for number 15 over you've got 100 here yeah do you know I was, what I mean I think that's a fair comment if I'm yeah I look back I look back on them days and I can honestly tell you yeah and this has just got to be how fresh I was to the environment at the time at no point when I was like practicing like reverse sweeps or trying like figuring stuff out because I wasn't doing it to be a knob you, no, see, no, you no. see some guys do it yeah. on purpose to like of course. Put, put a bowler's trousers down and just say, can't bowl at me. Yeah, exactly. I was genuinely just like young and I was just having a bit of fun, seeing what I could do, mm -hmm. all the rest of it. But at no point did it occur to me that other pros, 
you know, lads that have been in the dressing room for years and years, played a lot of cricket, would be there watching me going, what's he doing? But, but, but this is what I want to touch back. That's a great point you mentioned. But this is what I mean about different upbringings. Because yeah. you're brought up in Barbados, essentially, yeah. the majority of the time playing cricket. You, that would be a license to play. And I think that shows how the West Indian team play because they're just, they're either going to get 350 off 50 overs or they're going to get by for 100. Yeah. They never really get 210 for seven. No. But it's either one or the other. Yeah. And I think that's a little bit like you. But if you were brought up in England, I don't think you'd be the player you would be. No. Because you would be so technically correct and because you would have been around those experienced pros from a younger age because you were yeah. talented, you would, that would probably have been coached out of you. I mean, I'm was raw enough when I was in Barbados, just natural, all the rest of it. Then when I came over to England, the first thing that sort of happened was Meadows, Keith Medicott at Reeds, had to put a bit of structure into my game. Right, okay. So because he had to put a bit of structure into my game, I didn't know how much structure was the right amount of structure for me to do well. So I had a few years like battling, like being free, just hitting the ball. And also structure, whether it's trigger, where are my hands, where's yeah. my head, what what's going on, sort of a thing. So I had to really battle that to not turn into everybody else because mm-hmm. it was very easy for me to look around and see that I had five or six teammates at the time at my, in my school team that were all in the Surrey age group. And I'd look around, I'd go back and across trigger, hits in the V, back and across trigger, hits in the V, back and across trigger, hits in the V back and across trigger hits in the V <laughs> and I was there going what do I need to do to play for Surrey back and across well it's got it, is that that's the yes. that is exactly you got, what you, you got one of them you tick it off you're in yeah that's exactly you got to get the back and across trigger yeah you got to get some real nice pads push what? them down make sure you look like look the real deal break the bottom of them so yeah. you break over the toe pop your collar that's it. sweatband at Surrey yeah sweatband as well they did sweatbands a lot of art boys <laughs> sweatbands <laughs> and then you're good to go that's it. But that's what I, that's what I saw, and the only the only kid mm-hmm. who was n- who wasn't doing that, who's funnily enough the only kid who is also a pro in the game now is Dan Dalflake. At the Morgan. Yeah. Yeah, she can make some money. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, we went yeah. to school together. Danny D, mm-hmm. when we were that age, about a different way every day. He's. Some I love watching be, him play. Some days he'd be like closed off. He tries to tear, doesn't hands he? everywhere yeah. other days he'd be wide open and just pung it over cover over mid wicket your know, talent was unbelievable but me and him are the only two lads to play professional cricket from that time at Reeds yeah and we're the only two who were not coached in that in specific that regimented way. way yeah which is interesting I know I don't I've never met Dan I don't know him but I like watching him play be interesting to ask you I'm sure he won't let me ask this, even though I've never met him. It is was he someone that listened to rules or not? Because he seems to me as a, he seems to me as a character. The way he plays, if you say please get this, he'd be like, do you know what? Do one. Yeah. He'd do you know what I mean? He doesn't. But that's funny though because you do it your way, a bit of a maverick. He obviously wants to do it his way. But yeah, you're the only two yeah. that have made it. Everyone that's got a back and a trust Kruger is probably head still falling over to the offside now and they're getting done LBW. So. Yeah, I think you've got to break rules. I think the best players break rules and they do it their way. I think they do. We were 